let's talk about uh challengers but this is one of those movies um it stars uh uh zendaya um you know a lot of hype i know a lot of hype came through the trailer um because we saw zendaya in a very compromising position um so that's that's pretty much what's gotten a lot of people's attention but um let me kind of give you guys a quick um uh a quick intro about uh challengers what it's about and then um we'll get into it so um challengers stars zendaya um she plays uh tashi duncan a former tennis prodigy turned coach um she's married to a champion tennis player um who's currently on a losing streak but her strategy is to kind of get her husband back up and going um however he has to go up against his own best former friend um and that's pretty much what you see there so um let me start off obviously with the good uh let me just say that the the driving force in challengers when you're going into this movie the performances the acting are is definitely going to be key um you got the two actors uh mike and uh mike and josh i believe their names are um the two actors they were good they were fine um i think that their on-screen chemistry was really good because you do kind of get a sense that they are best friends right um you do get that sense that they do have this kinship between them and again their chemistry is really really good um you know when you do start to dig deeper into their past um i think that it makes the story all that much more uh compelling um and i think that what i liked about their performances here was that the director did a good job in just kind of including us in like very subtle things that make their friendship so vital, right? Um, we get to see some very key moments in their friendship. And it was almost like we were always in on a very specific, tiny inside joke that friends would be on, right? Um, but because of that information that we know, there are cool parts in the film um, that kind of tells us certain parts of the story without being very obvious about it. So I really like how they went about that and how they were so subtle with it, right? But let's not kid ourselves. Zendaya is the star here, okay? She is the main attraction. She is the main draw. Um, she clearly commands your attention whenever she's on the screen. But I gotta tell you, <laughs> and I didn't see this coming. Zendaya is a whole villain to me, to me. She was a whole villain. And I'm talking about in how she portrayed her character. I mean, she was the embodiment of toxicity to me. Um, I could never date somebody like her, basically. Um, but it also makes her character so much more intriguing, right? Like you're so just into how messy she is. Um, I mean, I found myself constantly questioning her character, um, her character's motives. I'm like, yo, what is she really up to? What is she really thinking? Um, but Zendaya did an excellent job of making me believe that she was that problematic. Um, now, besides that, I really like the themes uh, that were played into this film. Um, I really like the one about the nature of tennis. Um, you know, so like one of the themes is like, you know, it's not really about who wins or loses or how many points are scored, but rather knowing your opponent um, through a match. So for some of my anime uh, fans out there, um, you would see stuff like this in an anime, probably like in Dragon Ball Z, where uh, Goku would be like, no, nah, I need to see this person at full power so that we can really see and know each other, you know, or I want to see this person go all out because I get to know this other fighter by fighting them. So this movie does a pretty good job of capturing that, but with tennis. Um, so I thought that was actually pretty interesting because when you see the different uh, tennis matches and, and the different aspects, you see how like the players kind of interact and how they grow with each other in a certain sense. Um, and that was actually pretty cool to see. Um, but that's it. Now for some of the bad. Um, part of my issue 
Um, I guess I don't know. I, I, I'll say this at least from a minor standpoint. Um, I was not a fan of the directing choices when it came to some of the cinematography. So, for example, um, there are times where we get certain camera shots where we are the player and we're hitting the ball back and forth. Then sometimes we are the ball getting hit back and forth. And if I'm being honest, I was getting tired. I was like, yo, stop. Like, I'm getting dizzy. I don't like this. This is not really helping the story. Um, please just show me the players playing. I don't really care for all this back and forth like that. It's not that great. Um, so minor issue, but the bigger issue had to be in the storytelling. And again, this is also in the cinematography because the way the film is edited, we constantly go back and forth in time. We're constantly learning the characters when they're younger, when they're in college, and then we go forward when they're older. And oh my God, it gets exhausting. Like, listen, it's fine if you're telling us a story in present day and we need to go back 10 years to find something out. But this movie started to get really abusive and obnoxious with it. One day we're going back 10 years. Then we go in two weeks from those 10 years. Then we go back to the present. Then we go three days before in the present. Then we go three months from the three days. And then we go back 10 years, but then four years after the 10 years. Oh my God. Oh my, what the hell? So at some point, it started to get frustrating that there were so many different jumps back and forth. Sometimes they put a time mark and it was kind of easy to follow, but it was getting tiring. It was really getting tiring. And I was just like, yo, can we like, what, what is happening now? I will say that overall, you will still get the gist of the story. You'll still understand but I just felt like it got kind of messy with how the storytelling was going. And that to me, I, it was like, nah, you, you could have done this better. You could have done this better. Um, anyway, for the actual um, reason, listen, Challengers is not what you think it is. Um, I believe that the marketing itself presented it to be some raunchy, you know, crazy sex filled type of story about these tennis players it ain't that um and i think that the the send-offs are might disappoint some people but i would say that this was a pretty solid film in terms of depicting a relationship between two friends um and one messy toxic woman um and it was enjoyable for the most part um what i liked the most was the fact that this film managed to find a way to be appealing even for people that might not be fans of tennis. If you don't know the rules, if you don't follow tennis, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I do like that. And overall, I thought that the themes really made the movie worth watching to some degree. Um, so when it comes to my rating for Challengers, I would probably give it a 7 out of 10. Uh, it's fine. It's cool. Um, it's a nice performance for Zendaya um, and the other actors, too. Um, but this is not a movie that I would say you have to rush to go see. Um, this is not a movie that, let's just say you are a super fan of Zendaya. I understand. I'll just say that. I, I, listen, I understand why you want to come see this movie. Um, I would just say that don't go in thinking it's just that. Um, but overall, you know, it's fine. Uh, matinee at best, probably wait for streaming. Um, it's all right. It's cool. Uh, but anyway, do you plan on watching Challengers when it comes out? Um, do you plan on seeing it? Uh, if and when you do, come on back to this video. Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. If you're new here and you like what you see, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell so you don't miss out the next time I drop a video. I've got more videos and reviews to do for you all, and until next time, I'll see you all later.